Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this episode today. You can see over here on this side of the screen the red camera setup. Um, it's the only time in the first, the only time and the first time I'm using the red in these vlogs. Um, so I'm gonna describe my interview style, a really basic rundown of what I, what how I set up the cameras and why I set them up that way. Um, so um, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So just real quickly, the reason these are closed is because um, I was backlit. What backlit means is there's a lot of light coming from behind, so all you see is a silhouette. It's not that good for video, so I decided to uh, throw uh, put the shades up. Anyways, um, so my interview style is, well, well, for this documentary, I wanted it to be very much of what's called cinema verite, which means um, the camera's just kind of flying a wall, experiencing and watching things happen. Um, there are like traditional film techniques that are used, like right now I'm actually looking at the red monitor. Um, I'm on like, a, I'm, I'm on kind of, I'm kind of dead center, so I should be kind of, I think I did it on like this side here. I mean, eh, that's fine. But like notice how I'm not dead center like this, looking like I'm not, there we go. And I'm not looking into the camera and interviewing and then, you know, I'm over here. It was very much more similar to this setup here. I'm also on a wheelie chair so it's easier for me to wheel around the frame, but it was very much like this where um, it was very much conversational based. So instead of me asking the question and you answer it and you know looking down a list, it was very much of a um, of a of, of a conversation. So um, and one technique I learned because I've done many of documentaries in the past, one technique I learned um, was not to look at your questions. I know it sounds like and it's kind of counterintuitive because you work so hard on like writing these questions and thinking of them. Um, but I know a lot of people they ask the question and for about two or three seconds they're like this, and then you see them do this, and now they're reading the next question to figure out what they want to ask you um, or ask the subject. That's not good because then you're not listening, and sometimes the question that you want to ask next isn't along with what they're saying. So um, a lot of times I'll ask the first question and get their mind rolling and then I'll just let them talk. And then maybe if they're saying, you know, if the question was, where were you born? And they said, well, you know, I was born in New York, um, but raised in Florida. <laughs> um, I wouldn't go on to be like, well, how was New York when you were like, or I want to go into a question about New York because they didn't know that they were just born there. and so for you to listen to that and then uh, and then maybe tailor your questions. Maybe look down eventually, like I look down every now and then just to make sure I'm asking basically the same questions and stuff. Um, so that that's that's a really big thing is when you're interviewing someone, don't interview, listen for a few, like literally I, I get it where they say, and what year were you born in? And they come right in here and they just start reading questions. That's not very helpful. Um, at least I didn't find it helpful. So um, today was a very much of a conversation-based um, interview. One of the one of the, the the things I told my grandmother before the cameras were rolling was um, every when when I ask you a question, if you could incorporate the question into your answer. I, I said in a, uh, yesterday's vlog, um, which or no two days ago. Sorry, I said in two days ago's vlog, um, which basically means um, like. I, I said an I did an example of what year are you born in and they say I was born in whatever year because then it's not just a number and then when you edit my voice isn't gonna be in it it's gonna be just her responding to questions um, and that's that's a lot how these in like like 60 minutes I know sometimes they do similar stuff to that and um, you'll actually notice it in more traditional interviews with the interviewer in the interviewees in the frame and sometimes they just chop it up um, to make it seem a little bit different um, so I'm, a, I'm not in, in, in the film it's just m me talking and then we just cut it in so she's it's her voice um, so um, yeah I just if you guys are interviewing someone um, make sure to, to listen. Listen is the most important thing in an interview because it'll really help you 
build a better interview and build a better story. Um, so that's what I want to talk about interviewing. My interviewing style is I, I write a few questions down and then I just kind of go with what, what's happening, go, go with the flow. Um, sorry, I noticed that my frame is off in the red, so sorry about that. Anyways, um, and then so real quickly wanted to go over as well my red camera setup, what I used in the second camera setup that I used. So this camera, you see it off the screen there, um, this was a, um, this was the camera I used, right, right, I, I can't say I'm doing it right, but right around here is the camera I used, the RED, um, and uh, I had it set up very much like the RED is filming right now, um, where I, I'm off a little bit, I'm not looking directly into the lens, because that's, that's very news anchory, because they normally have a teleprompter, so if you actually watch the news, you can see their eyes kind of do that. Um, but I didn't want her to look right into the camera, I wanted her to look at me and it would be a little off camera. So um, this is about the the eye level and kind of stuff that I had it. Um, so, um, and then this camera was off to the side and kind of tighter up into the face to get more of a dramatic um, part, dramatic side of the, of the, um, of her, you know, explaining stuff. So basically what happens then is now that um, I interviewed her, I look, I listen back to the interview, I rewatch some parts and I make some notes about where I have to go next. Um, my grandmother was born um, and raised in St. Louis, so I'm definitely going to have to go out to St. Louis a little bit. Um, and one thing about documentary filmmaking that I've learned is you have to get more than, like obviously in just any filming, you have to get a lot more than you need, but especially documentary filmmaking, because it's hard to go back. Normally in a bigger production, um, it's easy for you to like, cheat the shot, like grab a car and go down, you know, if it needs to be on a dirt road, like any dirt road could work if it just looks like the area, but it's hard to do that in a documentary because it's so factual that you need it to be spot on. So I try to get everything I can, as much as I can at the time that I'm filming, so I don't have to come back later. And, and redo stuff. So anyways, I'm trying to keep this episode kind of short and kind of like simple because I, it's a lot to edit red footage and now I have to edit red footage tonight. Um, but so um, this was uh, kind of like the second installment of me describing how this video, thir second or third? Third, sorry, I'm going crazy today. Third installment of um, how, how I'm editing and how um, and how I'm filming this project. And so um, if you guys are filmmakers, I hope that hopefully this was important. If you have any techniques, let me know in the comments section down below. Um, and I'm gonna end the episode here. So I'm gonna look at the red. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow.